Hello, and good morning. All right, so, <clears throat> so today is going to be Vagrant Story, uh, specifically the uh, the rebalance mod that uh, is still being worked on at the moment. Uh, it's actually it's actually something that uh, was expected to originally come out several months ago, as mentioned this earlier. But uh, yeah, it looks to be a pretty darn amazing mod, and uh, I guess without any further ado, let's go ahead and see how it goes. So, there's a bit of a long-ish intro, so while that's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the stuff that the mod changes. So I'm just kind of going down the list here. It's not something that changes absolutely every single facet of the game, but it just changes some of the stuff that, you know, kind of needed to be changed. So going over the main features of the thing, rebalance-wise, uh, break arts are stronger, so they're actually his best modes now. Uh, those are something you get access to partway through the game there. Uh, essentially, they're, if you've ever played Tactics Ogre, they're basically kill moves. Um, that's actually where, as far as I'm aware, that's actually where they came from. Uh, they even use the same names and everything. Uh, spell costs got greatly reduced to make them more viable. Uh, this is mostly just because as strong as the magic system was, uh, you kind of had to have a mage build in order to, uh, in order to be able to make use of them. Uh, if you're aware of how the game works, it's kind of, um, it's, I want to say, like, semi-randomized, but you kind of build towards whatever you want, and eventually you'll get there. Like, I've heard it described as Souls-esque, except, I guess that's a fair comparison. Like, there's more story to it. It's actually a sequel to Fun Friends and Tactics, of all things. As you might be able to tell from the uh, art style. But, uh, yeah, so... How can I describe it? Like, it's mostly a dungeon crawler kind of thing, but with a constant uh, focus on like, just making your character better, dealing with interesting situations, dealing with different types of defenses that you have to overcome, that kind of thing. So, for example, Azar, you can't make it through the entire game with a single weapon. Some that are better against certain things, like, for example, my main playthrough of the thing. I had a spear that was good against most stuff, except, like, completely did nothing against certain affinities, against certain races, or whatever else. And you just, like, you're constantly going and adjusting all of your equipment. You may have noticed the, uh, in the intro there, he's taking apart and reassembling weapons. That's a big mechanic in the game. So, any weapon you can get, you can disassemble. Any armor you can get, you can combine with other things. You're just constantly MacGyvering new crap together in order to make different weapons. And the cool thing is, all of it is constantly evolving. So like, for example, say you have a spear or something, and you like go stab a bunch of zombies with it, and it'll get better at stabbing zombies. And say, you know, you keep using this over and over, you have this, this background stat in the back called, uh, I think it was like Phantom Points or something like that. So you've got their ability, you've got this uh, Phantom Point thing, which is like, Kind of like um, a scaling modifier on whatever extremes your weapon goes to. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Like, you can just kind of dumb your way through it as I did, but if you want to get into the nitty gritty of it, there's a ton to go through. Oh. So, this guy's uh, first sword here, the Fandango that he starts with, it's basically going to be the best thing up until we land the first boss. You can aim for different parts of everybody. Um, there will be more to this combat system as it goes on. But for the moment, I uh, just have attack and get hit by stuff and use items. That's kind of it. Uh, so the way that this is uh, evolving, you, for example, you end up getting different counters and different combos. Like, for example, you have different uh, attacks where you end up hitting and you hit the button and you end up doing some different combo moves and then it does its thing and if you time it right, you can uh, chain it into another combo move. And you can just do this over and over and over, and you can, if your timing is good enough, do that infinitely. You can just run up to every single boss, and you can combo them, doing one damage 800 friggin' times until they die if you want to. Like, that is completely an option. But uh, you may have noticed that little risk number going up, so every time they, so you, you swing your weapon around, your risk goes up a little bit, and you can think of it as a kind of pers it's not exact, but you can think of it as a percentage modifier uh, to your defense going down. 
So for example, if you uh, if you go and you do like let's see 15 combos in a row, you might end up finding yourself up all the way up to like risk 50 or so. And you're gonna there's a pretty decent chance uh, the next hit's gonna take away most of your health. If you get that to 100, odds are like uh, just a random bat flying by will be enough to one shot you at that point. So you're pretty much sacrifice. You're basically going full offense or full defense kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that can potentially uh, crush you out of nowhere. So you're constantly having to set up different defenses and stuff against it. Now, if you're thinking this sounds frustrating, it isn't. The way that, like, in almost any other system, it might be. The way that they did it in this one is freaking beautiful. Like, they literally tried to copy the system for, uh, for Tactics Ogre, and didn't, like, even just strictly copying it and almost pasting it into a larger, uh, a larger thing, didn't even work out nearly as well as it did here. Mostly because it, it functions very well when it's a single-player environment. Or, oh, single-unit environment. So if you're wondering about everybody's weird clothes, yeah, everybody dresses like a just friggin' bizarro in this universe. I, I don't know. Yeah, your main baddie here with his, like... I don't know. Kind of like like an Anakin, Anakin Skywalker kind of situation going on with this guy. Except he's, like, mixed with Sephiroth or something. Got his crazy metal claws and everything. And, um, it's okay. He'll be dead in just a sec. So there's that. You got your main character who's kind of like the universe James Bond more or less. But, uh, yeah. Even he, for all of his sneakiness, seems to like hair that sticks out a foot above his head. Yep. Gonna go check this guy with my metal gloves. Totally feel that pulse through that. And then there's that guy. Okay, so this guy right here, Harden, probably one of my favorite characters in this game. Mostly because he seems to be the most aware of the fact that he's in, that he's not the protagonist. <laughs> like, he spends half the game just completely freaking out at the fact that you're going and decimating all these bosses. And one of my favorite moments happens like three hours in or something, depending on how you do it. And there's this moment where they send out like this this ogre thing to fight you. And you end up being the thing, and they're having a conversation a couple rooms after that. They're like, dude, this guy just went and fought a giant one to one, and it's dead now. Um, he's gone through like a hundred of our guys. Maybe we should just leave. Like, it's really about time to consider running away. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, dead guy came back to life. Yeah, show you a little more respect for fairy tale. It's kind of this guy's theme for the next few hours. If you're wondering how much time for this, by the way, pretty much all over the place for the course of about a day. And now uh, this dragon sees through techno vision. The VHS dragon. But look at this. All the PS1 graphics, you know, they really don't have a whole lot to work with here, but they've got so much out of it. Like, they've even managed to get expressions on characters' faces, they managed to get, like, injuries on their little details and all their equipment and everything else. It, it holds up! Freaking PS1 in the graphics, but it actually holds up surprisingly well. Alright, now, since options are fairly limited with this first boss... Alright, he's not the actual first boss. He's like the pre-first boss. Uh, the first two bosses you don't really have any characters for. But this is the first intro introduction to the Wyvern theme. It's like, this is the beginning for a second. It just like slowly builds up and builds up and builds up until it finally gets up to this theme. Grab this entire fight. Oh, crap. Actually, I forgot that I can't use my log stick. Oh, my god, so dead then. Let's do one of these. How's that? 
that a little bit of an improvement. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Okay, so what I was trying to do here is actually just go ahead and go to the items. Now you actually end up using the same item pool once you get into the game proper, because we're not even into the first part of the game yet. This is kind of the prologue. Yeah, for some reason I have to keep the audio astoundingly low to the point I can barely hear it in order to be able to uh, actually have the levels go through right. Who the hell knows why? There we go. Dragon's pretty much already dead with spears sticking out of it all over the place. And with those might be ballista bolts, uh, all things considered, because I don't think you see any, any spears that blocky in it. Okay. While this intro is going around doing its thing, might as well go finish up uh, reading what this rebalance mod is about. So yeah, break arts, they got improved, so they're actually his best moves now. Spell costs got changed to make magic more of a thing that's available. But you don't have to spend your entire MP pool to use explosion once, uh, presumably. Some of the chain and defense abilities have been revised. Uh, Two-handed weapons are stronger and their break arts do more damage. So there's actually a reason to use more of them. Even though that being said, I've always preferred crossbows and spears myself. Uh, so staff break arts uh, now use int instead of strength, because if you were using staffs, you were a mage anyway. Uh, broken body, head, or legs uh, cancel out strength up, intelligence up, and agility up, uh, respectively. Uh, weapon grips have been changed, a few consumables improved, drop rates are increased, uh, enemies have been tweaked for a greater challenge, and you should be able to see one of these pretty early on here, uh, actually with the very first boss. Uh, let's see, a quicken spell was added. New enemies got added to all areas, with an emphasis on post-game. Uh, basically, this just means you'll see more and more varied enemies throughout the game. Uh, there's new enemy abilities, uh, new enemy melee attacks, which combine damage and status effects, including uh, AoE. Uh, polearm grips. Uh, there's one new polearm grip. So if you like spears, there's that. Uh, the escape way got removed. Uh, that was basically a shortcut. Uh, time trials uh, were removed. Uh, all magic locks got removed from chests, which is fine by me, because quite frankly, I never was a huge fan of going back for those. Uh, unlock spell got removed. Training dummies got removed, so you can't uh, train up your uh, your weapons in a very particular way against a training dummy for a billion years. Uh, the analyze uh, spell hit rate is always 100%, so yeah, you can't exactly fail that thing anymore. Uh, surging bomb regenerates five times faster. Poison is two times faster. Mana break only blocks enemy spells, so it doesn't reduce your healing anymore. Uh, the Crimson Blade spellcasting got greatly reduced, so that's a good one. Uh, so yeah, uh, as far as uh, as far as their casting getting reduced, well, that's a little bit of an of an interesting one because uh, if you've played the original, it was they had this this thing where early on there's a couple of them and they're having a conversation like, oh no no no, we'll never use all this magical stuff. It's against it's against our religion and all that. God's gonna be pissed. And then, kind of by the end of it, all their knights are running around, like, just using all the buffs they possibly can, because they're like, screw it. Through the rules, we're in some weird, like, complete zombie situation here. There's all kinds of magical nonsense all over the place, so we're taking whatever we can get. <laughs> but this, uh, this became a little bit annoying sometimes, because you'd, for example, you'd turn around and you'd walk into a room for a second, and then have to sit through the animations of three separate knights, knights uh, buffing themselves. Alright, so there's their kiddo, who's about to become a hostage. <laughs> Goodbye, kiddo, that's about to be a hostage. Well, actually, they already have him. He's, like, he's the one that was being carried around like a sack of potatoes earlier. And yeah, then the last two things, grimoire item descriptions got cleaned up, and misspelled rune names got fixed. Alright, this is our secondary character. Like I said, this, uh, this intro goes on a little bit. There's actually a fair bit of story throughout this entire thing. Even though most of it, you don't actually spend interacting with the story that much. Kind of in the background, but it's kind of amazing how much stuff goes on in the background. And what's interesting, and um, what originally like interested me in this game in the first place, because I, I never actually grew up with this one. It's one that I only found out about like five, six years ago. Um, 
What's interesting is that a lot of the, just uh, just like uh, I mentioned before, one of the reasons it's compared to Souls is there's a lot of environmental storytelling. Like one really good moment of that, for example, is a few knights, like I think like two or three of them, get sent out and they're supposed to go scout out an area and report back to their guy. And you see them mentioned several times, like, you know, where, where the hell did our scouts go? And later on, you just find them wandering around as zombies. Like, you don't know what happened to them, but it's like, they turned into zombies. At some point, something killed them and turned them into zombies. So there's that. Ah. They're right there. So they've got a city that's basically on an island, covered in whirlpools and, uh, and like spiky corals and everything, so they can't get boats or people in there. But the only way for them to go in is through the friggin' catacombs here. I love that they actually went and explained all of this. Like, honestly, I don't think that many people would have asked. They're like, no, we've got to have this full 3D friggin' thing here. Got to make all these environments, got to do all this other stuff to make sure that people understand that this is the only way for this to work. Hmm. And yeah, so she's there as his backup. Although, quite frankly, he really, really, really doesn't need it. Hmm. Yeah, one. Th let's see. Uh, one thing that I, that I really would have liked, though, is like, okay, they've got a whole bunch of connections going, going all over the place. Like, obviously, FFT is just this is a direct sequel to that. This is like a hundred years later or something like that. Like, you can see some similarities, and you can even find some items from FFT in it. Like, uh, in my in my first game, um, uh, first time through this thing, I one item that I ended up using most of it was uh, Agarius's necklace. How, how to get introduced to this thing? Uh, there's a guy that does, or did, a whole bunch of uh, stuff for uh, for Dark Souls. I was really interested to, in at the time. So it's kind of a weird chain of events. So, I grew up with Armored Core. Um, the people who made Armored Core made Dark Souls. And I was really interested in that at the time, and there was a guy that was doing a bunch of very interesting videos on it. And then one day, out of nowhere, made a whole bunch on this one. So I saw them, watched all of them, and then that one was intentionally cut off partway through in order to go entice people to go try it themselves, and then I immediately went out and bought it. So, uh, so yeah, that's how that happened, and, um, yeah, been kind of on and off playing it every, well, pretty regularly since. And yeah, it, it was EMB, exactly. That guy's awesome. Kind of wish uh, he still did more stuff, but uh, he still shows up every now and then. New game comes out, has more info on it, better. And alright. Okay, so they're talking about how Sydney's freaking amazing. As all crazy and robotic and stuff. I don't remember if they ever explain what the hell the deal is with his arms. Like, I remember one cutscene where somebody has one of his arms, but, uh... I forget what exactly was the deal there. I think they were just like returning it to him or something. Let's see. Ask because it was the same deal? Yeah. His intro to this is is a pretty fantastic advertisement for it, I gotta say. Like, oh, well, speak of the our bad guys right here. <laughs> we, we were trying to find him in the place and he kind of just followed us here. Which is a pretty good trick, all things considered. Like I said. His backup gets uh, gets kidnapped like five seconds into the game, as you do. Now with this mod, like I said, the first couple things that we're going to notice, uh, and I correct me if I'm wrong on some of these, but uh, the first things that you're going to notice, a lot of the early game enemies uh, are wolves now. There's a few more wolves around at, at the very beginning. That's that and the first boss are what I ended up ended up noticing first. Gonna say first a billion times. As you know. No live burials today, thanks. I was kind of wondering what kind of accent they expected this guy to have. Like, if, if you go through some of the other characters, they kind of sound like they're supposed to sound like the ones when they redid FFT. Like, when they redid the uh, cutscenes and everything for it with the uh, live acting. So some of the knights sound like they're all pretentious and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and, instead of using the saves, I'm just going to save state it. Yeah, combat system is still the same here. It's quiet for most of it. 
Like whenever there's music, there's music. And it's really friggin' good, but all the rest of the time it's quiet. Another reason it gets compared to Souls, but, you know. We'll see this kind of room a fair bit early on. If you're wondering about falling damage, by the way, uh, it does exist, it's just you gotta fall a pretty big distance for that. Here's, yeah, there's those two. Da, 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 da. Be like, no, no magical stuff, though. It be a grimoire. Yeah, I don't know. They sound all super pretentious British and whatever else. Which is funny because uh, when they went and like, it was quite a ways after this. Um, let's see. I think it was FFT. Then it was this. Then it was the FFT remake, and then it was uh, Tactics Ogre after that. It seems like by that point, they finally got past their uh, Purple Pros phase. Like, where it wasn't, you know, this weather forsooth, whatever, you know, it's just like everything is super pretentious kind of thing. Um, it's, I don't know, it's like, it's just a weird thing when it comes to Britishisms that uh, people want to shove into games and whatever else, and writing and movies and whatever else. Like, like this guy. He kind of looks like the guy that used to play um, uh, James Bond back in the day. It's like, imagine him trying to do a weird Irish accent. Candle comes up every time when I see this guy. This too be a grimoire's doing. They cannot start, etc. Then you got this uh, Lenar looking a-hole over here. Actually, truth be told, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if that's kind of where those looks were meant to come from. Oh well, but yeah, no, uh, that guy's uh, hairdo always kind of made me wonder if potentially they were ever going to suddenly announce, like, oh no, you know, FFT, TO, they all were in the same universe the whole time, you know, just like, TO happens right after this. And like, I don't know, do any of the islands kind of look like Ivalis? They can't seem to decide what the hell that island even looks like, so, hmm. I mean, it's possible that they're just on opposite ends of the world and never encounter each other. So is that. Yeah, that guy's exactly Lenar. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, uh, just look up uh, uh, Leonar uh, from Tactics Over. Like, it should bring up his portrait. It's exactly that guy. <laughs> Uh, at, at least for the remake, it was. Like, the, the remake guy looks exactly like this, and then he sees a ghost. And apparently he steps backwards so hard that it causes an earthquake. Alright. So all these early ones, you can usually just aim for the head and it's going to do the most. Again, not very many strategies open up until you get your chain abilities and stuff like that. Uh, which is, again, going to happen after the first boss, because there's not really any grindable enemies or any of that just yet. I'm going to keep missing these 80%, because of course... You may have noticed there, that guy was in the middle of a jump, so it did a little bit more. Let's see, middle of jumps, if the weapon's put away, and, um... If their back's turned, I believe, is when you end up getting bonus damage. Not always that noticeable, but it's one of those games where just... A few, like, an, an extra two or three points is usually going to be enough to, uh, to accumulate pretty friggin' quickly. Let our guy go down first this time. Yes. Guy will continue blocking 80%. That's reasonable. Like I said, most of the time, this just kind of opens up after the first boss when you start getting your chain abilities. I believe that's actually the first time you can get them. So up to that point, it's just heal and smack stuff. So don't worry, it gets more complicated. If you played Parasite Eve, all of this may end up looking a little bit familiar and medieval. And I completely missed that platform. Excellent. That's a great start. Great way to do it. We go here. Uh, pretty soon going to be picking up the Seventh Heaven, which is the first uh, ranged weapon. I'm not going to be using it just yet. Simply because that first boss, something that a few people may have run into in the past, uh, the thing is far weaker to the sword than it is the crossbow, meaning that if you end up using the crossbow, you will almost certainly get friggin' crushed. Right. That should 
All that. Two for the dogs, one for the bats. Oh! And we even got a good drop out of that. So there are random drops. Uh, there's also some some randomization to the items that you get from bosses. So like some of the spell books and stuff like that. So your abilities, your items, your equipment, all of that is potentially randomized over the course of a run. Uh, not to mention your stat gains are as well. So every time that you beat a boss, that's kind of when you get your, your stat gains there. And you get like anywhere between 1 to 5 to like health, magic, I think speed, and uh, and strength. And there's other items that you can pick up that end up boosting those along the way, but those are few far and far between, and usually only give you a point or two. Point being, your stats are hard to come by. Oh, and there's your introduction to traps as it douchely hits you with a tornado as you're about to run through that door. Unfortunately, until we end up getting heal, there's going to be a lot of this. If there's one thing that I honestly would have hoped, it's for heal to be available earlier on, and I believe you can actually get that earlier on, uh, and you do end up getting it. So, let's see. The last time that I went through this, the first boss gave Degenerate. I don't think that's one of the ones that's set. Okay, go through here. Should have a couple of puzzle rooms, a couple knights. And this is the first time that you start noticing that Sydney is friggin' everywhere. So, you may wonder why they're going in slow-mo here that's not just lag. They're gonna go off and do their thing, they're gonna go fight you. And it was him all along, and he, apparently he squeaks every time he transforms. I like to think he just stepped on a squeaky toy. Right. So, as you see right there, all the attacks do have physicality to them also. Also, since uh, this guy's got a helmet on, his uh, arms are a little bit uh, more exposed than his head is, so... Yeah. The types of armor everyone's wearing on their different parts actually does matter. It's just a fun little thing there. Like, the first time through, it sometimes seems like nonsense, but until somebody explains it to you, you know? It seems weird. And then you end up looking, looking through it all, and it's like, no, there's just so many details to this, and... Again, Tio had the same problem, where there's just systems on systems on systems on systems, and then if somebody's just looking at it from layman's perspective, they're just like, I don't understand any of this, I just want to hit dude. And it comes off as confusing sometimes, but then as soon as you explain it, it's fun times. Alright, so, that should be the one with the room off to the left, yep. Oh, we're gonna have an earthquake first. Let's go have an earthquake. By the way, if this gets interrupted out of nowhere, uh, just due to uh, babies waking up or whatever, um, then it will be continued at another time. Just I am expecting interruptions today, so just FYI. But I do hope to at least get to the first boss. That baddie gone. This baddie gone. Um, I believe with this mod, crossbows might have had their range reduced as well. Hmm, not sure how this will that up here. We must have tried very hard. Unclear. But okay, so... What was I getting out here? So, um... Yeah. Crossbow. Won't be, won't be useful for a little while. Mostly because, again, you kind of need, uh, need chain abilities in order to make use of it, and uh, I don't have any of those. Like, right now, it's literally just slightly longer range than, than the sword here. I don't even have a shield to use with the sword, which is another thing that ends up helping quite a bit once you end up getting defense abilities. This one, because I don't want to use the bulb, because that'll be useful later. Drop a little bit of a quick save, just just in case. I'm gonna stop, you know, quick saving all the friggin' time um, uh, after getting past the first boss. Like once ch once chain abilities are a thing, we'd be a fair bit more confident about it. Uh, this mimic, I believe, might be new. I don't recall there ever being a mimic here, but then again, I could just be mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. If there's somebody that's played through this a bajillion times and knows that I'm wrong. 
Like, I'm no expert on this, I just really, really like the design of the game. Actually, interestingly enough, uh, if you've heard of Unsung Story, and specifically the, uh, the dev that took over development after the other one completely flopped, um, apparently Vagrant Story is what caused that to happen. So it might potentially end up saving that game. Alright. Elf thing got a numbness thing. Run away now. Let me go here. But but yeah, it was a kind of funny thing, because apparently he was just gushing about Vagrant Story to a guy. And then he ends up, uh... That, that guy ends up mentioning that he knows Matsuno. He's like, would you like to go meet him? He's like, yeah, friggin' hell yeah, that guy's a hero. And so, uh, then they ended up doing that. And then apparently he ended up taking over, um... After that other project there, because he was the, the head of a dev studio. Let's see. That Mimic is definitely new? Good. Okay, then we already have some confirmed new stuff, and I know for a fact that I put it in correctly. Alright, so we've got some minor... Affinity downs with that glove, but oh well. Right, I think I may need to pause this for just a moment pretty soon here. But oh well. We've got like, let's say 30 minutes. Okay. Doggy, get smacked in the face. I feel bad for Doggy. By the way, do I. Uh, Am I misremembering it, or are um, are there far more dogs in in the mod? Mash circle until the bat dies. There we go. Another fun thing. There's a box. Like you may have noticed earlier, the guy was trying to hit me. He wound up hitting the box instead. So if there's a box, you can end up hitting the box. I should not have hit the box because I need that box. Okay, let's go back and unhit the box. Actually. The first mimics were mines in B1 in the original. Okay, I thought so. Like, the first time I saw that, I'm like, I'm pretty sure there wasn't a mimic here. So then again, it's sometimes hard to remember the layout of this game. That being said, I'm not always very good at remembering layouts, but, you know. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Number of dogs seems about the same. Gotcha. Oh. Don't die to that. See, but I, I know for a fact that the crossbow range must have gotten reduced a little bit because I remember this spot in particular. Walking out and finding a whole lot of use and attacking that dog. I was able to just snipe it from up here and if I put on the crossbow, I will not be able to do so. Let's say, let's put on the 7th uh, Heaven. Ooh. I was just going after the boxes like a douche. Wants that puzzle to be reset. So yeah, can't uh, can't actually aim at him. I'm gonna have to go ahead and use a heal item here just because I don't have any heal other heal options as of yet. And I don't want to get insta eaten by that dog. Now he probably can only do about 30 to 40. Don't really want to risk it. See, this one is one of my favorites, and this is the first time I'm hearing about this mod. Yeah. It's, um, it kind of came out of nowhere, and he doesn't seem to advertise very much, um, just because it's still in development. So I probably should have mentioned this this earlier, but this is the demo. Uh, this is the demo version. It's not fully completed. Uh, there's a lot of stuff done. I believe he was waiting for, uh, for it to be considered completable. Because for a while there, it apparently was not actually completable, like it would apparently bug out before the end. So, uh... So yeah. There's that. Go ahead and hit one of these boxes here instead of hitting a rock, which you think would damage this weapon a little bit more. Oh well. Take this over here. They thought God of War was the first one to put a ridiculously strong protagonist uh, carrying around boxes everywhere. You were wrong. Pull a lever. If you try to open the door, he just says, hmm, I wonder if that lever will do a thing. It's like a very inconvenient way to handle things. But it does make sense in the case... Of, well, no, it wouldn't make sense in this case of a siege because it should be on the other side. So they're trying to trap stuff coming out instead of coming in. Maybe they just did it wrong. Alright, I expect to see this picnic scene at least 80 more times. A.K.A. the uh, PTSD tree. Like, oh, hey there, family. 
How's it going? Yeah, um... This makes more sense later. But he's kind of haunted by his kid. Hey, Dad. Bye, Dad. Get attacked by bats, I guess. Happy Father's Day. There are flying rodents. <laughs> Ready. Go, there we go. We go places. Alright, so this is the one where you need to attack a box. I'm gonna go ahead and just punch this box with a sword. Jump down, grab box, and then bring box over here. This is the kind of puzzles you end up seeing a fair bit early on, like I said. Not as much uh, later on. You see all kinds of different stuff. One nice thing about it being emulated is that first-person mode works just fine. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, on the Vita version, as well as the original, there's a fair bit of slowdown when you end up trying to use first-person. Who knows? I mean, I guess it just couldn't exactly deal with changing between the two modes very well. Alright, so it's gonna slowly, slowly, slowly go up. Eventually. It's gonna take a minute. The uh, one thing I will say, though, is that you basically need full health for this first boss fight. So I, I wish that this would end up healing a little bit faster. Uh, it's, like, it, it ends up going faster the longer you wait. But I wish it would it would go up faster than that. That's just more of a personal thing, though, and it's, a, it's really just an early game problem, because later on you can just kind of, you know, pop a heal and be on your way. But for now, we can just sit here a minute. Perhaps go ahead and use some of these cure roots, uh, despite the fact that they're a limited item. Um, as far as I recall, there's never really a point where you can just have infinite items, so they are very much limited. But in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and use a couple of those. <clears throat> Alright. Drop another save state here. Pop out the sword, if you're wondering, on these chests, by the way. Uh, they don't actually give you anything new. Uh, he says, being completely wrong. Man, I feel like an idiot. That whole time I always assumed that that was an item box. <laughs> you saw the stream, I thought they had finished the mod. It seems finished. Like, honestly, um, from, what I've, from what I've seen, it seems finished. I haven't really seen anything that's abjectly broken. I just don't think he's, uh, he's finished everything he wants to do with it yet. Drop a save state right there, just in case I inevitably get crushed by this thing. Okay, so he just did a basic attack there. One new feature of this mod, actually I should probably even show it and I probably will show it on accident. Right there. So you see that right there? There's a lot of enemies, and especially a lot of the bigger ones, that are able to essentially hit you in all the parts at once. So if there's like a big guy with a mace, instead of just like, oh, he injured your arm slightly, it's like, no, that guy completely wrecked your entire existence. So, there's that. So this guy, if I recall correctly, should take like four or five hits to the head to be done. Oof. Oh yeah, like right there. He ended up critting and completely breaking my legs. Go ahead and heal up. Probably still needs to balance some of the later game stuff. Apparently he was originally starting with late game is the interesting part. Um, how that works is and kind of unclear, but it seems like post game is what he started with. <laughs> Don't crit again. I can't believe I, I kept doing this fight with just the basic heal item instead of using the bulbs. That was kind of the problem last time. Thank you, that that was just, a, just an item box. You've got your Resident Evil box, by the way, in this one. Not everything carries over. Like, I believe there's some limitations some of the time, and it mentions when there are. And then should take one more hit and be done with this guy. Doesn't look like it made it easier, at least. Yeah, no. He added a whole bunch of really cool enemies in it, and one of them is a variant of this guy. Uh, that I saw him going and demoing. He added some cool stuff early on that I think we'll be able to cover pretty soon here. 
as well. Like for example, if you remember, um, there's a, there's one of the uh, the floating platform rooms with with the two uh, the gargoyle statues. If you end up going to that room, uh, as soon as you hit the lever to turn it on, the gargoyle statues actually come to life now. But there's a bunch of cool stuff he added all over the place, so I'm pretty sure there's just new stuff he wants to do with it. Um, like, for example, some of the enemies that he was showing here, or like, uh, let's see, there's an Ogre Lord guy that kind of looks like one of the bosses with, like, the weird ear ring situations. Kind of looks like he has a mask. And there's, um, uh, the Night Stalker, which is a variant of one of those bosses a little bit after the Lich. Like, the, the double-sword samurai-looking guy. Uh, there's one that looks like the Lich. Uh, there's, again, uh, variants of this, uh, Minotaur, which end up hitting you pretty much everywhere. They're currently still normal agent rank. Ooh. Well, that's useful, I guess. You get raided on the stuff as you go, and you're somewhat, uh... There we go. So, I didn't get this last time. Last time I just got a healing item, I got the key, and I got to generate. So this time got heal and to generate. So you have uh, random items that you get from the bosses, and they have a shared pool. So, like, you can get abilities really early in the game sometimes, other times they end up showing up way friggin' late. It's just, it's really, really cool when that happens. Like, you just suddenly get access to some ability that you shouldn't have yet. So, because we got ability, got uh, the heal ability right off the friggin' bat. If you're wondering, by the way, if you've played Tactics Ogre, and you're wondering what the whole deal was with getting grimoires all the time, and having to use those things to learn abilities, this is why. Why you got a free cast of it, why you ended up having to learn them from books all of a sudden, instead of just knowing the abilities or equipping the book as it was previously in the series. They really, really wanted to reference this game. Um, there's that. Alright, so we got a hidden chest up here. You may have noticed it during the cutscene. We got a Pelta. Oh, no, 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 give me those items. What am I doing? Got the Pelta, got some Varibulbs, and Yggdrasil's Tears, so pretty much never have to worry about Paralysis again. Uh, most of the time, your uh, debuffs and stuff like that are more of a thing where you lose time because you have to go and deal with them rather than they just completely debilitate you outright. But they're tiny irritations that you got to deal with. Let's get that Pelta on there. Alright. So we lose a little bit of agility, but it's fine. It's better than nothing. Drop another save here. I really hope these saved dates are actually, you know, saving. Oh well. This looks like the Parasite Eve engine. Interestingly enough, uh, this was actually apparently a tech demo for Parasite Eve. Like, they, they're they like, okay, we have this new engine, we want to go do some stuff with it, and they're like, okay, just do something. They're like, we want to make a sequel to Final Fantasy Tactics for some reason. We are going <laughs> to... We're gonna go do it that way. Like, okay, fine. And then they go and they prove that it works and they prove that it can be friggin' awesome. So, uh, but yeah, then they're like, okay, we wanna do that, but with guns and like skeletal dinosaurs and crazy blob monsters and operas and jumping out of helicopters on fire. Like, yep. That sounds pretty friggin' metal to me. And so that happened. Then they're like, okay, that was awesome. Let's make a sequel and then let's make another one and let's make them suck. And, you know, they did. We're gonna pretend that was intentional. <clears throat> but yeah, so this is absolutely the Parasite Eve engine. Like, in every single way. Although, I have to say, this does a much better job of actually using it, in my opinion. Now, I say this mostly because of the way that the character models are done. Like, technically... Why, uh, technicality-wise, or tech-wise, let's just say tech-wise, screw it. Tech-wise, they're both very impressive. They both do pretty friggin' awesome stuff with what uh, they do with the engine. But, like, look how much detail they put into each of the characters here, you know? It's like they even manage, even though it looks blocky, they still manage to capture all the details and stuff here. Also, yeah. Happy Father's Day! You're single now. So that's a start. And he looked upon his family and decided, I'm gonna be the most metal dude ever now. And then he became crazy strong. 
Now, given what you've seen so far, you might be wondering what, uh... Notice what he said there, by the way. Like, just write the first thing that he said. <laughs> he was pretty pissed about that. This is a lot less standard RPG than it looks like. Also, it's funny that he didn't use this teleporting ability earlier. And yeah, Merlos, um, he's kind of there to keep the plot going. Let's see. Favorite description of the Parasite C vehicles? Imagine that they made a Devil May Cry 2 2. Yeah. I don't know what they were thinking with it. Because, okay, you know what's funny? You know what the the, uh, the second one... Uh, Par so, Parasite Eve 2. What that game tried to do, there was a ridiculously low-budget, completely unheard of friggin' survival horror game that did it better. Uh, which, uh, if you've ever played the Resident Evil rip-off version of uh, Men in Black... Um, let's see. Has recovered battle memories from suppressed memories. Like, oh, I remember my family's dead, so now I get to be awesome and metal and stuff. So, that's exactly what happens, and then you get to pick your abilities pretty soon here. Okay, so battle abilities, that's these ones. So you start off with uh, heavy. I was like having that on square. Game life and temper. So, we'll cover those in the next room. And we've got a ward, reflect, and impact guard. You just start off with three of them each time. Go ahead and move to the next room. Why he decided to jump down, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, so they, um... Oh. I probably should just do a hard save here. Most See, I wanted to go do the whole thing of... Uh, apparently interesting stuff happens if you go through the entire game never saving. But I don't trust the save states to carry over between uh, restarting the emulator. Because previously they have gotten deleted before, and I'd rather not have the entire thing get deleted. You know, for the sake of a weird bug like that. Alright, so there's like 10 minutes left here, so I'm gonna try and show off those abilities there. It, nothing's really changed there, I'm fairly certain. Oh, never mind. One of the kiddos is up. Can I do one thing? Probably not. Oh, well, good morning, child. Let's just get into one fight and call it a day then. But yeah, no. So, the Men in Black uh, Resident Evil ripoff. Like, just, it was on PC only. Just look it up. Yeah, as soon as you get good timing on one of these, you just automatically get a second one. Why it's lagging, I don't know. But yeah, you can chain those infinitely if you want. That's bizarre. Why the hell is it lagging so hard? I'm gonna go after this box in frustration. So the defense abilities work the same way. If you end up timing them at the correct time, you end up uh, getting stuff from them. Freaking lion. Hmm. I don't know, but yeah. So, so the thing that they tried to go for in that one was that you would go, you know, you'd go on a, like a, a mission of some sort. You'd come back. You'd spend your points, and you'd be able to get better equipment or whatever else, and then you would just go back out on another one. And that's exactly what the Men in Black one did. Like, you started off with the New York scene. Except you actually had a boss fight at the end of it and stuff like that. And you got to the end of it, and then you went back, and then you got recruited, and they had this, like, comic book-looking scene situation in between. And so, like, you went there... You know, you went to your kind of quartermaster guy, and they're like, okay, you know, just, like, pick a thing. So you pick a thing. And, uh, yeah, then you just go on your next mission with only that. If you end up going to the gun range and getting a bunch of points or whatever, you sometimes would unlock other stuff, and, uh, you know, you'd have other stuff to go into missions with. And it wound up being an interesting survival horror thing, because they're like, okay, you know, you get... You got your noisy cricket, or you got your just like standard sidearm thing, or you got your plasma cannon thing with like three shots in it, and that's all you got, and everything else is just kind of there. Um, but yeah, it was it was interesting as a concept. Um, if somebody modded that one, it would probably end up working quite a bit better, but you know, I might cover that at another time. 
hit. I'm not used to the sword timings because I don't really use swords that often. Like I said, I always like spears and crossbows. I think it might be because I had too many uh, saves going at once that this is this is lagging all of a sudden. Which sucks. Oh, they're about not uploading Ring of Red for so far. I figured you must have had a corrupted save or something after all this time. This has been a hot minute. See if we can get to the next part within the next seven minutes. Also, I thought I was attacking the bat. Oh, we're laughing in the background there? Okay, never mind. Uh, it was up, so it's time to go. So uh, I will just save state it here, and we'll continue on at the next possible opportunity. So, see you then. And thank you for showing up.